Ugh. What do you want, intern? Hi, uh, Mr. Chick-fil-A. I, I, I just tweeted something on the company's account, and I, I think I screwed up. You're calling me at home on the weekend over one little tweet? How bad could it be? $220 million bad? Well, I'd like to fire you, but that would count as work, and it's Sunday, so you're off the hook. Yeah! Loopholes! Internet. Welcome to Food Theory, home of the original chicken sandwich theory. Friends, do you ever feel like you blinked and suddenly every fast food place has a chicken sandwich on the menu? If so, you're not crazy. It's the chicken sandwich wars. No, that is not actually a term I made up just so I had an excuse to slap battle armor onto chickens, but it is something I would have done. Since autumn of 2019, the biggest fast food chains in the world have been ferociously duking it out for market share, even more so than usual. Prior to 2019, restaurants understood their place in the American chicken sandwich fast food chain. Chick-fil-A, the self-proclaimed originator of the chicken sandwich, was king, and everyone else was welcome to try and duke it out for a distant second place if they wanted. Despite being closed on Sundays and having only 2,500 locations or so, McDonald's for reference has about 40,000, little old Chick-fil-A was selling around 45% of all chicken sandwiches in the country until Popeyes dared to challenge the king. In August of 2019, Popeyes launched their take on the chicken sandwich to, uh, let's just say medium levels of fanfare. As far as ingredients go, it's more than similar to pretty much every other chicken sandwich you're familiar with. Fried chicken breast, mayo, pickles, both a spicy and non-spicy option. The launch of Popeye's chicken sandwich was going about as fine as you'd expect. The excitement surrounding the sandwich was probably on track to die down in a matter of weeks, as most fast food menu items are wont to do. But then Chick-fil-A screwed up. They hopped on Twitter. Their tweet was a seemingly harmless but slightly passive-aggressive jab at Popeye's, which read bun plus chicken plus pickles equals all the love for the original. And that, friends, is when Popeyes pounced. Pulling off possibly the biggest reversal in fast food Twitter history with exactly two oh-so-southern, oh-so-devastating words. Y'all good? Now, us Yanks may not fully appreciate what's going on here. I didn't fully grasp it at first myself, so I asked my wife Stephanie, who was born and raised in the southern U.S., to explain. Simply put, this is a perfectly understated southern retort wielded by a proud southern company. And the nuance was not lost on Twitter, which went absolutely below ballistic over the insult. Given the brand over 20 billion impressions valued at an estimated 220 million dollars, Popeye's chicken sandwich sales skyrocketed, causing them to run out of chicken sandwich supplies in just two weeks, way faster than they anticipated. When Popeye's managed to get their restaurants permanently resupplied with chicken sandwiches in November, sales skyrocketed even more, and Chick-fil-A suddenly found itself in a position they'd never been in before, number two. Now, after a few short months, Chick-fil-A regained their market chair and Popeyes settled into a battle for number two against McDonald's. But this was no return to normal, friends. Nay, the chicken sandwich sphere was changed forever. Popeyes had drawn blood against the king, and all the other fast food chains woke up to the idea that maybe the chicken sandwich market was up for grabs after all. And that is why we've been surrounded with new and revamped chicken sandwich menu items over the past year or so. Burger King came out with the Chick King, Wendy's released its classic chicken sandwich, McDonald's came out with a whole line of crispy chicken sandwiches, and that's hardly the full list. Basically, everybody hopped on the chicken sandwich train and the marketplace got cluttered. Or, I guess I should say, cluckered. Yeah, maybe not. Anyway, if you're feeling like a chicken with its head cut off, never fear. Food Theory is here to help you make sense of it all. While the tastiest chicken sandwich is a personal decision that you can only make for yourself, we've taken it upon ourselves to look at things a bit more objectively. That's right, we've already found the optimal fry order, we found the optimal fountain drink order, and today we're breaking down the numbers to determine which chicken sandwich delivers on their spicy promises and gives you the the most cluck for your buck. For the sake of simplicity, we're gonna keep today's episode focused on the 10 biggest US fast food chains with chicken sandwiches on their menus. Our apologies to Hardee's and other smaller chains like Zaxby's and Culver's. Unfortunately, you guys just didn't make the cut this time around. So with that being said, let's meet our competitors. First up, we have Chick-fil-A, who loves to remind people that their original Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich was introduced all the way back in 1964. I would like to add that being the first fast food chain to sell chicken sandwiches is a very different thing than inventing the chicken sandwich, but that's a theory for another day. Next up is Popeyes, who of course disrupted everything when they dropped their classic chicken
chicken sandwich back in late 2019. And if you think there's only one classic chicken sandwich in today's competition, I have sour news for you. Wendy's has a classic chicken sandwich. KFC has a classic version of their chicken sandwich. Arby's has a classic crispy chicken sandwich. So does Sonic Drive-In. And almost as though to make sure that every permutation of those words has been used to name these sandwiches, McDonald's and Dairy Queen both have a crispy chicken sandwich. Fortunately, Jack in the Box and Burger King bucked the whole boring sandwich name trend. Or cluck to the tr Stop it, Matt! Stop it! You have a problem! It is not funny anymore. Anyway, as I was saying before I rudely interrupted myself, Jack in the Box now has the cluck sandwich, and Burger King just released the Chiking sandwich. Chiking! I don't really like the name, but I do enjoy how fun it is to say. All right, so if food theory is not here to judge these sandwiches on taste, what are we going to judge them on today? Well, the first thing I want to know is who's giving us a lot of chicken and who's skimping. It is a chicken sandwich after all, not a pickle sandwich. So for our first category, grams of fried chicken per dollar, we're setting all the toppings and other nonsense aside, weighing the chicken breast by itself, and dividing that by the cost of the sandwich. I also want to know about breading. There are some really impressive looking chicken breasts in today's contest, but looks can be deceiving. Receiving, especially if a restaurant double fries their chicken and coats it with two layers of breading. So our second category is going to be breading percentage. We're going to strip those breasts naked, please don't demonetize this video YouTube, and determine what percentage of the fried chicken breast is actually, you know, chicken. Next up we have total calories per dollar, cause let's be honest here, no one's ordering fast food chicken sandwiches cause of the health benefits. What we the consumers want is to fill our stomachs with plenty of food without breaking the bank. So by taking the number of calories in each sandwich and dividing it by the cost, we're going to be able to determine which sandwiches are giving you the most food for your dollar. And the final category today is crispiness, because hey, everyone's throwing out the word crispy, who's telling the truth? And the way we're measuring this one is via sound. You heard that right, we're listening to our chicken sandwiches today. More on that in a couple minutes. So with that in mind, I sent theorist field researcher Luke off to buy 30 chicken sandwiches. That's three from each restaurant from across the greater Los Angeles area. Why three? Because we wanted to get a diverse data set. We didn't want everything to be judged off of one sandwich alone. Once I was satisfied that his car would smell like fried chicken for the rest of eternity, we carried out our first test, grams of fried chicken per dollar, by stripping away the toppings and buns and weighing the chicken breasts solo. Once the average chicken breast weight for each restaurant was determined, we divided that number by the cost of the sandwich. Our winner for this category was the King Killer, Popeye's classic chicken sandwich with 30.2 grams of fried chicken per dollar. KFC was next at 27.9. It's worth mentioning Popeye's and KFC also just so happened to offer the least expensive sandwiches on the list, with a price tag of just 3 dollars 99 in our market. Not too shabby. Arby's and Dairy Queen, which had the two most expensive sandwiches of the bunch, were doing their best to duke it out for last place. Arby's ultimately took that dishonor with just 14 grams of fried chicken per dollar. Less than half of what you're getting at Popeye's. It's also worth noting that the Cluck sandwich from Jack in the Box boasted the largest chicken breast of all, averaging a massive 140 grams, but it wound up missing the grams of fried chicken per dollar podium due to its equally massive 599 price tag. Next up, breading percent. Honestly, the results of this category really surprised me. In my mind, I figured like 10, maybe 20% of the fried chicken was breading by weight, but turns out it is way more than that. We took our three fried chicken breasts, peeled the breading off, and re-weighed the naked breasts. And get this, in the case of Jack in the Box Cluck Sandwich, there was almost more breading than actual chicken. With a breading percentage of 49% averaged across the three sandwiches, the Cluck Sandwich was the big loser of this round. That is almost half the sandwich is just breading. The winner of the category Category with a breading percentage of 31.5% was Chick-fil-A, but again, am I the only one astounded by that number? The least amount of breading was still basically a third of the fried chicken breast by weight. Man alive, no wonder these things taste so good and are so horrifically bad for you. Speaking of which, our next category was total calories per dollar. This time we considered the entire sandwich. Buns, toppings, sauces, everything. First and second place in this category again went to the least expensive sandwiches on the list. Popeyes and KFC respect. And the bad news continued for Arby's, whose pricey classic crispy chicken sandwich placed dead last yet again. By the way, if you health conscious viewers are curious which sandwich on the list had the most calories overall, that would be the Chiking, with a whopping 800 total calories in a single sandwich. Truly is the king of heart attacks. Meanwhile, the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich had the fewest calories on the list with 440. Then at long last, it was finally time for the category I'd been waiting for, crispiness. Why was I so excited about this one, you ask? Because we got to rub fried chicken with plastic 
plastic forks and measure it with a decibel meter. That's right, we decided that the most objective way to determine crispiness would be to measure the decibels created by rubbing a fork across the chicken. The crispier the chicken, the more decibels that should register on the Decibel X app on my phone. The soggier the chicken, the lower the reading. Shut up, no, your test for fried chicken crispiness is ridiculous. Now, full disclosure, we actually failed at this test the first time around. See, field researcher Luke picked up all the sandwiches from all 10 restaurants, which took a couple hours, and then we tried to measure the crispiness, but by that time, the sandwiches had all been sitting around for a while, and a lot of them were honestly pretty soggy. So we went back to all 10 restaurants, got yet another round of sandwiches from each, and redid the experiments right there in the parking lots, moments after leaving the drive-thru. Real quick though, our failed test wasn't a complete loss because it made me realize something interesting about chicken sandwich packaging. See, a lot of the restaurants put their chicken sandwiches in foil bags. A couple actually wrapped the sandwiches in foil, Dairy Queen was the only one who wrapped their sandwich in paper, and Arby's was the only one to serve it in a cardboard box. After the sandwiches had been in Luke's car for a couple hours, the ones in foil were all still very warm, but they were also really soggy, because the moisture was trapped inside that airtight packaging. Dairy Queen and Arby's sandwiches, on the other hand, were the exact opposite. Those sandwiches were cold after a couple hours, but they weren't soggy, thanks in large part to their more breathable packaging. So, take note, friends, if you need to keep your sandwiches hot for a longer period of time, foil packaging is the way to go. Meanwhile, if you're doing something like ordering from a meal delivery service and you despise sogginess while also caring about the environment, hey, maybe choose a place that wraps it in paper. At any rate, here are the crispiness results. McDonald's had the least crispy chicken of all, topping out at a mere 48.1 decibels, which, gotta say, a bit of a shame, because crispy is literally in the name. The crispiest and loudest piece of fried chicken, on the other hand, came as a total surprise to me, Dairy Queen. Now, I'm not sure where crispiness ends and rock hardness begins, but let's just say that Dairy Queen's crispy chicken sandwich coming in at 61.2 decibels definitely towed the line. And for my money, I'd rather get a sandwich that falls in the sub-60 decibel range, like the second place Chiking or the third place Cluck Sandwich, both of which definitely earned the right to call them crispy, though ironically, they're basically the only two sandwiches on the list that don't. By the way, I am happy to report that the Decibel X app method generally agreed with what my mouth was telling me in those bites. The loudest chicken sandwiches, for the most part, were also the ones that felt the crispiest in my mouth. And so, with all four categories measured, we were finally ready to tally the results. Prepare the podium editors. In third place, we have Burger King. The Chiking is a big, big beef and sandwich, but BK found a way to keep the price under five bucks, earning it solid numbers in the grams of fried chicken per dollar and total calories per dollar category. Those 800 calories won't help anyone's waistline, but they will help Burger King snag the bronze in today's competition. Silver goes to KFC's classic chicken sandwich, which did really well in the cost-related categories thanks to the $3.99 price tag. The Colonel would be proud, or should I say is proud, since we all know that he's watching us at this very moment. <laughs> and first place, the gold medal goes to Popeyes. Sorry, Chick-fil-A, but it looks like you picked a fight with the wrong chicken chain. Popeyes classic chicken sandwich is a whole lot of food and the price is great. And I know we're not reviewing taste today, but I do gotta add something about texture. If there had been a softness category in today's experiment, Popeyes would have won that one too. I had never actually had a Popeyes chicken sandwich before I started researching this episode, and I was not prepared to have my chicken nestled between two brioche clouds of heaven like that. It is a darn tasty good sandwich, friends. And finally, Arby's earns the dishonor of last place. It wasn't even close. Their expensive, tiny breasted sandwich could not hang. Even the crispiness was below average, which begs the question, what about Chick-fil-A, the so-called chicken sandwich king? Well, their chicken sandwich just missed the podium coming in at fourth. Their sandwich was pretty well priced and actually had a deceptive amount of chicken in it. The thing that actually held it back in today's competition was the low calorie count. So overall, not a terrible showing by Chick-fil-A by any means, but it sure seems like there are a handful of competitors ready to upend the pecking order. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. Theorists, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to check out some of our other fast food optimization videos. Our episode on getting the most soda for your dollar is on screen right now. So go ahead and drink that episode in if you're thirsting for more theorage. By the way, give that subscribe button a peck while you're at it. Unless, of course, you're chicken. <laughs>